Here we go. All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, welcome to this week's what is February 3rd, the Loki community call. And I should probably share. <laughs> okay. Let's see what we have today. 2.5. So our next minor release is planned. I don't think we have an exact date for this, but it should cover a few things. Some very noticeable improvements in Promtail. Um, Kafka support. I think this is our first external release with Kafka in it. Is that is that correct? I'm going to go with yes. I don't remember. Cyril, Cyril made it. Cyril did the Kafka work for us. Do you remember if we released this before? Uh, don't think we did. But I'm not sure. Nice. I think there's documentation on it, so it's probably in there. I think okay. we released it to Rap4, if I remember correctly. All right. Well, let's just pretend we didn't and then yeah. take credit New, for it. Yeah. I definitely have done this before where I did a presentation with a release and then like announced something that was released in a prior release. So it would be on brand for me, anyways, to, to double up here. So Kafka support, very exciting. Uh, thanks, Cyril, for getting getting that that in. There's also the Docker, uh, is it, what is this, service discovery? And I want to say Carson. Uh, hey, Carson's not here, is he? No. I can talk about this a little bit, because I, um, Prometheus added service discovery for the local Docker daemon some time ago. And actually, I tried this at one point, and I just didn't get the PR in where, you can run a static config and use Docker daemon service discovery and do what we usually do with like Kubernetes, which is use that to generate the path to the file locally so that you can tail the files. Um, this actually goes, this allows that because it incorporated that service discovery, but it also includes another um, target manager, uh, which lets you tail not from the files, but from the Docker API directly. So it pulls the Docker API and returns logs. So that's pretty fascinating in the sense that you can um, do it without having to read the files from disk. I think that you still have to have file logging enabled. I think if I read the API right for the Docker daemon, that in order to get that API, the logs API to work, it still has to write to disk. But anyway, it's a way to sort of simplify that process. You don't have to do file mount permissions and other things into your container. So that's pretty slick. Yeah. I th think that you should take all of these prompt tail announcements, Ed. I'll take the okay. V12 and the, the um, binary stuff. Well, Gelf, Gelf, I don't, I don't know. But the gray log extended log format, um, Cyril added this. Thanks, Cyril. Uh, the format is JSON, if I remember, but Specifically, there's a way now to send UDP gelf formatted messages into Promptail, similar to how syslog works, where you can set up a listener and forward these messages. I think I got that right. Um, Cloudflare 2. Oh, can you talk about that? I don't know about that. Uh, briefly, yeah. So the if you are an enterprise customer, I'm not sure actually. Uh, I think you need to be an enterprise customer of Cloudflare. Then you can run Promtail and sort of pull the log using the API uh, from uh, your HTTP services or whatever services you're using in Cloudflare, and it will send them to Loki directly. So it's kind of it's kind of neat. We're we're collaborating now with Cloudflare since this PR on this this track. So um, there's going to be more out of this. Awesome. Yeah. Can you all see the trend? <laughs> more integrations here. All right. Um, really sweet community contribution and two forms, I think from two separate people where uh, one introduced rate limiting sort of globally. So you can configure Promtail to say, only send at max, I don't know, bytes, whatever kind of bytes per second um, to Loki. So, you know, Loki currently has server side rate limiting, which is mostly intended for protecting the cluster from being tipped over. Um, and you know, when one tenant is rate limited, it affects every Promtail sending. So this is a way to do client-side rate limiting um, 
which is kind of nice if you have clients that have sort of get really noisy and you don't want to send them to Loki. Um, and then it also was added in a separate PR as a pipeline stage to where you can use like stream matchers and things to only rate limit on certain behaviors and matchers and things. So you can do sort of for the whole prompt tail um, instance or to do a set of matchers in the pipeline stage. Pretty sweet. Thank you, the Loki community for being awesome. Yeah. There's a, now that I think about it, there's been a couple other community PRs that'll make it into this as well, which are pretty big. There is a selection of PRs for, on the ingester side, to change how we do locking internally. And that re resulted in some very noticeable improvements in the tail latencies of, of pushing logs th through Loki, where now we can much more consistently and at lower latencies do this. Now, there's probably a caveat there that previously, I think the highest we would ever really see would generally be like 200 milliseconds. But even going from you know 200 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds is is a very noticeable improvement on our end. Yeah, the part about this that I thought was fun was the use case that this user had was running. We tend to run wider than taller, so we tend to run more pods horizontally scaled than fewer pods vertically scaled. Um, it seemed like they had fewer pods vertically scaled, so pushing higher bandwidths through a single pod seemed to exacerbate that occurrence of longer tail 99 latencies, maybe garbage collection, probably. Um, oh, also, yeah, there's a bunch of more streams for every ingester, right? How yeah, we, so... How we shard the inverted index in the ingesters. There's kind of a couple things that are relatively hard-coded there that if you went super tall, you could potentially start to see this in, in a more severe form. Found the PR for this. Um, so yeah, I think that depending on your sort of operating model that this may, you may see more benefit from it. It's pretty neat. So backing up a bit, um, we are also introducing a, the next schema version in Loki. This will be V12. And this is largely done to um, to enable higher scale when you're using S3 as a backend, which functions a little bit differently compared to some other object storage uh, backends. And we've tested this uh, fairly rigorously in S3 so far. We will actually be running it in um, ourselves. And this has been a pretty long standing issue for when a particular tenant that uses an S3 backend, Loki cell, Loki cluster, gets you a certain size. Uh, they can start to see rate limitings and, and that sort of thing from S3 based on how we stored chunks in the key structure of chunks in S3. And so this should really allow us to blow past those pr prior limitations and, and play much more nicely with the S3 APIs. And so it should be fairly exciting for anyone running in S3. It should be a, a drop-in configuration change. You can just start a new schema version uh, with B12 at some date in the future. And then once Loki... You know, once it, that date comes, Loki will start writing in that format uh, any chunks past that point. So that was uh, largely done by uh, Jordan Callum, uh, who are here on this call. So congratulations, and thanks for the thanks for the PRs. Oh, and I i signed you up for this in 2.5 even though you only told me about it this morning yeah it is the pr is not merged yet but um <laughs> yeah, so kind of some background here is this i wanted to make the binary operations in logql think like you know a plus b um run with a higher degree of parallelism previously they would do they would run each leg serially and this kind of led us down a rabbit hole where we fixed a couple other bugs in the process and, and kind of exposed some other things we could do. But the you know TLDR version is we're seeing a roughly a 10x increase on shardable um, binary operations compared to prior, largely because there was a bug which prevented them from being sharded previously. But now they are now sharded, and we are running each leg in parallel. So that should be very exciting. And we should get some better numbers as we as we run this over a longer period of time. But again, drop-in replacement here. Uh, 
nothing that users actually have to do. It should, they should just see much faster queries for these sorts of operations. And ooh, log volume histogram. This is, um, Kavi, do you want to do you want to talk about this, or do you want me to talk about it? I want to give you the opportunity. Uh, I don't know, like. Just put it so, in here that we can give an update that we've been testing and play around with it. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, uh, we added some. Uh, I mean, Ed, do you want to like? Uh, I mean, what exactly we are planning to talk about this actually? About um, the, uh, yeah, so the 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 thirty second background story is that um, <laughs> you you all win, and we're gonna make the histogram better. So the community, lots of users of Loki, have been unhappy with the sort of partial histogram that comes back. Um, I feel like I've on this call in the past tried to argue that. It's fine, but I agree. Um, I, I, I give up. Um, we should make it better. So we did. Uh, I should say the, the Grafana UI folks have now implemented, and the way it's implemented in Loki is by issuing a range query on your logs query. So when you submit, you run two queries. Um, you get your logs result back, and then you get a visualization of that query back as a range query. Um, the concern was that that increases the amount of work that you do on a query. So we've been kind of towing the waters in our infrastructure with what that looks like and um we are hedging things a little bit by by sort of limiting how long those queries will run um we've had a couple conversations about whether or not we should include those knobs in loki itself right now we control the time out of those queries with a, a gateway component that we run um the current plan is that we're not going to do that we don't want to introduce the complexity of it if most people don't want it and don't need it, um, which is sort of the feedback we've heard so far. So um, it's not really anything changing in Loki here. Um, you know, we did the, the the Grafana end is really what changes right now. It's available in 8.3.x um, if you enable the feature flag for it. So you can go check it out now. Um, the version that's enabled in Grafana has a hard coded 10 second timeout, um, which will be removed in most likely be removed so that the queries just run for however long they take. But um, so far, we're seeing that the performance impact is, it depends. It's not that significant, though. It, it varies between maybe 40% to 50% more work on average across the tenants that we've enabled it for. So you know, if you ran the query normally, we are doing in another like 40% work to do the range query over the full range. And that's not too bad. So originally, we were worried it would be like two, three times the amount of work, right? Because um, you know you can imagine running a logs query over a big set of data. You get back a thousand results. That query is done, but the range query now has to calculate the whole time. So, um, so the good news is that in practice, I think this will work quite well. TLDR. And. We should open this up. Uh, that's the end of our agenda for the day. That's it. That's all we got. Yeah. Short and sweet this week. Um, so anyone, questions, concerns, things they're happy about? No concerns, just questions or positive feedback. <laughs> and if not, we can always give everybody some time back. Yeah, I just want to precise that. Um... On one five, this was just uh, you know the top of the list. So there's like a lot of other improvements that have been done over the time and bug fixes, and uh, so it's full of uh, it's full of uh, new stuff. Yeah, I, I tried to look at the list of PRs that we've merged since 2.4, and it hasn't even been terribly long since 2.4. There's 300 PRs that we've merged, which is the wow. most that I've seen in a previous release was 200. So squad's getting bigger, community's getting bigger, a uh, lot of stuff. Cyril, you're absolutely right. Like there's so much more. I just honestly didn't plan ahead well enough to go through the list to pull out more, sorry. But there's a lot of PRs in there. Yeah, yeah one, one of them that came to my mind is the ability to use the, the line now, um, mm, the yeah. template format. You can, you can do that now. And what is it, underscore, underscore line? Yeah. Like that? Yeah. 
Oh, so in the template function, it's available now as if it were a label. So you can, yeah, cool. Nice. Um, hedged request is in here too. We haven't talked about that yet. Yeah. Yeah, and the Loki operator is also, I mean, it's not part of the release, but it's something new that has been added recently. Yeah, I don't remember if I talked about that. Maybe regardless, though. So the the folks at Red Hat on OpenShift built um, an operator for, for Loki. And it's a general purpose Kubernetes operator. It's not specific to OpenShift. It, it um, has some configuration to enable more features for OpenShift, because that's what their use case is. But they contributed it upstream to make it part of the Loki project so that um, any Kubernetes environment can take advantage of a Loki operator. Um, its implementation right now is just getting started. I think it, the API lets you configure a size, like you can say, I want to, you know, size X2 small Loki instance or something like that. I don't think that's the right name, but um, pretty excited about the kind of future of that. We're, um, we talked about Helm a lot last time, and we'll bring that back up again, but we're still, still trying to figure out how to do the best that we can with Helm. We're kind of hopeful that maybe the operator can remove some of the Helm charts that we have and replace them with a Helm chart that deploys the operator kind of thing. Um, but very excited. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Perry. Perry's not here for all your hard work on the... Um, oh, speaking of, shoot, we have new Loki team members. Perry, I can't pronounce your last name. It's very Greek. Um, Perry's been helping us out a bunch um, from the Red Hat side on Loki for years now. Been a, a big contributor, both for largely for helping us sort of with the perspective of how they use and other people use Loki. It's been extremely helpful. Um, Kavi, congratulations, Kavi. Welcome to the Loki team. Um, and uh, Karsten, uh, who's not here also. So I uh, mentioned before that within Grafana, thanks to the I don't know, I would say a success of Loki. We've been able to grow the project and grow people. So um, this call is bigger and most of the people on this call are now uh, part of the Loki squad. So uh, looking forward to what we can accomplish in the in this coming year. It's going to be an exciting one for Loki. Yeah. All right, speak now or forever hold your peace. OK, thanks, everyone, for coming. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, Seth.